There's no story uh, that I know, and I've been in the ministry for over 60 years, there's no story I know that's more exciting than the Emmaus story. And uh, there's nothing that I've done during these 60 years of ministry that I'm more excited about. And uh, no uh, partner in ministry uh, that I've been more excited about than my partner, Harold Goodwin. I remember uh, when I was involved at the Upper Room, uh, responsible for that ministry, and a big part of that ministry, of course, was spiritual formation, especially prayer. And as I traveled across the, the country, uh, I kept hearing about Curcio. People would tell me about Curcio and ask me if I had been to Curcio. Well, even the word itself was strange to me. I, I, I'd never heard that word before. But I kept uh, asking people about it and <coughs> investigating it. And I learned that it was a, a Roman Catholic uh, renewal movement and heard about it so much that uh, felt that if I was going to be responsible in the responsibility that I had at the upper room, that I really <coughs> needed to know more about Curcio. So uh, I sent one of our staff persons and his wife uh, to a Curcio in Miami, Florida, and Jerry, my wife, and I went to a Curcio in Peoria, Illinois, uh, and it was a it was a transforming experience. I I knew immediately uh, why people were so excited about it, and our friend, uh, my staff person, Danny Morris, and his wife, who had gone to Miami, uh, came back with the same story. I don't know a more complete model of presenting the, the core of the Christian faith and Christian doctrine. Mm -hmm. Added to that, though, the, the call for involvement and commitment uh, as, um, as the Curcio. Well, uh, we knew uh, after having experienced it that uh, we had to somehow uh, make it available to our constituency, the, the constituency of the upper room, which was primarily not Roman Catholic, of course, but, but Protestant. And so we negotiated with uh, the <coughs> Roman Catholics, and we started the upper room Curcio uh, in Nashville. Curcio means short course, and the meaning of the Curcio movement was a short course <coughs> in Christianity. And uh, some American airmen had experienced the Curcio in Spain, and they brought it back to the United States, to Texas, and it became a, a movement here in the United States. Uh, so we, uh, we negotiated with uh, the Roman Catholics, and they allowed us to start basically a, a Protestant Curcio and it was the Upper Room Curcio, and we started that, of course, in Nashville, the home of the Upper Room. And it immediately, it immediately just really took off uh, across the nation. But because uh, uh, there's a strong emphasis in uh, Curcio uh, on Holy Communion, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, uh, and the Roman Catholics have a, a very strict uh, understanding and doctrine of that. Uh, there, there arose really some a little bit of tension uh, between us and and the Roman Catholic Church because in our tradition, of course, we we offer the Lord's Supper to to any Christian that wants to come, uh, and. Uh, they became concerned about that, and, and they, they began to think that maybe uh, we, we should not be as free uh, in, in offering the, the Lord's Supper as we were, but we couldn't be faithful, of course, to our understanding of the faith and, and not have open communion. So uh, again, uh, in a beautiful kind of way, a wonderful kind of way, we negotiated with the Roman Catholic leadership and they allowed us uh, to take the dynamic of, of Curcio and order it uh, around our perspective. 
And uh, so we did and gave it the name uh, Emmaus, Walk to Emmaus, because of the story in Luke's Gospel about Jesus being with his disciples, walking to Emmaus, and uh, the climax of that story is that they had suspected that there was something special about this stranger that was walking with them along the road, but they, uh, they had the, the dramatic experience when uh, they arrived at Emmaus and uh, they had supper together and Jesus took bread and, and broke it and they recognized him then fully as Christ. So we, we took that, that dynamic, that metaphor, that symbol, the walk to Emmaus. From the beginning with us, it was totally, totally ecumenical. And uh, the, the success of that uh, was absolutely uh, amazing. And I want to say at, at this point really that the content of the walk to Emmaus is very important. The content is very important, and we'll talk about that later. But the dynamic, the dynamic of the process, uh, how we move through <clears throat> from Thursday night to Sunday afternoon, the dynamic, the process is equally important because it cultivates and creates Christian community unlike any other dynamic I know. So uh, in the midst of all that, after a couple of years, uh, being with the upper room and the uh, upper room walk to Emmaus, I came to Memphis uh, to be the senior minister at Christ United Methodist Church. And I knew that somewhere along the way, uh, I was going to introduce the walk to Emmaus to this congregation. And uh, I bided my time, I prayed, I, I waited. And then uh, uh, an answer to my prayer came, and really a miraculous thing. And I want my dear friend, Harold Goodwin, to kind of pick up at that point, Harold, and tell the story about how you and I first met. Right, right. Well, my sweetheart Dot and I were on the verge of burnout. I had so many associate ministers at Decatur Trinity. The congregation was growing, but I trained associate minister and he'd go find him a senior ministry job somewhere else. So I was on the verge of burnout and Dot and I went to Kansas City, Missouri in 1982. And uh, while we were there, we heard uh, about a lot of things on evangelism. But the important thing was we heard about the Casillo. And uh, it was explained to us that there was a Protestant version of Casillo. And uh, so when we got back to Memphis, I called the upper room. But they said to me, well, you need to talk to Maxie Dunham. Said he's at Christ Methodist. I called you and you were in your office. and. Dot came from a different direction in our one car, and I was there. And you said, tell me about the disciples of Christ. And I said, y you don't know anything about the disciples of Christ? You said, very little. And I said, well, I started talking. And you got that big grin on your face like you have right now. <laughs> and you said, uh, I think it's providential that you want to do the walk to Amazing. Because we did not want it to be just a Methodist program, we wanted to be ecumenical. So from that point on, we, 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 you had some people scheduled to go to Myrtle Beach and they had to cancel. And Dodd and I filled those places, went to Myrtle Beach and experienced our walk to Amelia. If you take notes on those 15 talks, Absolutely. you pretty much have the essence Absolutely. of the Christian faith and way. That's weight. exactly what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not only the, the doctrine and the theology, it's the practical expression of the doctrine mm -hmm. and the theology. Well, one of the, one of the attributes or one of the things that makes an Emmaus walk talk is important is your personal experience with Jesus. How, how have you experienced Jesus as far as priorities, discipleship, changing our world, 
go through scale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, down in, right down in the list of those 15 talks. But if you can hold on to that, uh, if you took good notes first, if you took good notes, second, if you can hold on to it, you can go back to it through the years and look back on it and thank God that you had an opportunity to spend 72 hours with a group of mm, Christian people. Yeah. Yes. Came back to Memphis, and you had been, in your wisdom, you had been developing enough people to start a walk to a mess in Memphis. You've been sending people, do you remember, to, to Nashville, to Birmingham, to Myrtle Beach. And once we got a group going here, you met with us and set up a steering committee. So the very for, from the very beginning, the walk to Emmaus in Memphis has been truly ecumenical. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you see the numbers are astronomical in terms of how far reaching the walk to Emmaus has been and continues to be. And uh, Doc and I were just always so excited and happy about meeting you and Jerry. Uh, and I, I remember how moved I was uh, when you told me that you'd gone to Kansas City because you were beginning to experience burnout. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew about burnout. I'd experienced that been kind there of thing. And done that. I'd been there. I had been there and done that. And uh, that you had experienced burnout and then in response to that uh, became involved in Emmaus. And I don't know, um, uh, Harold, I don't know anyone uh, that has demonstrated and incarnated, really, the core dynamic of the Emmaus Walk, as did you and Dot. Do you remember how we uh, found a place to meet? Because that was a significant part of what well, we had to do, because we had to get away. It opened up and everything was right. The country place really needed more people to use the facility. And I really think that it were not for the walk to Emmaus, they wouldn't fully utilize the country place. Yeah, and that, uh, it, it's such a unique place uh, in terms of, I, I use the word isolation, uh, in terms of being away from the hubbub of the city Absolutely. that enables us to, <clears throat> to concentrate uh, and to leave our watches behind and yeah. uh, forget time. We left the city, we went through the country, Wound up at this strange place called a country place. But uh, it's been an exciting thing to see the country place grow along with Emmaus, or uh, Emmaus grow along with the country place. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, when, when I talk about uh, the uh, coming out of uh, the Roman Catholic Curcio and uh, the walk to Emmaus evolving, we, we really were given a gift when we were able uh, to establish uh, the walk to Emmaus because it enabled us uh, to take the dynamic, the process of Curcio, which is what's so powerful in building community and, uh, and, and a community of sharing. We were able to keep that, to keep that dynamic. And some of the subjects of the talks that were given, as well as not, and I don't know quite how to say this, not, not as a rigid uh, uh, sacrament, it, a sacrament to be sure, a sacrament to be sure, uh, but because that act of Holy Communion represents not just the death of Jesus, it represents his life how he served, Absolutely. his death, his gift of salvation to us, all grace, and his resurrection, the life that he gives us to, to follow him and to be his uh, disciples. Yeah. Well, I, I have to praise God every day for many things, and right at the top of the list is our experience in the walk of the well, that, I appreciate that, Carol, and that's what I was saying in the beginning, that uh, uh, the partnership that we have had uh, has been rare and has certainly enriched my life. Bless you.